Welcome to the Crude Life Media Network podcast. My name is Jason Spees. I'm an award-winning multimedia journalist and talk show host. And on today's episode, we talk with Kirsten Burbank about the yoga business, brick and mortar versus online, and how yoga can not only help your family wellness, but also your professional wellness. In just a moment, our interview with Kirsten Burbank, owner of Mojo Fit Studios. But first, I want to take a moment and remind you good folks to please support our sponsors. They literally keep our lights on. Eric Hatch and Hatch Coaching. With Hatch Coaching, you'll experience extreme transparency. They're in the business of helping others, and in that case, means helping you. Coachingwithhatch.com. That's coachingwithhatch.com. MBI Energy Services. For more information about MBI Energy Services or to find out their latest job openings, visit mbienergyservices.com. That's mbienergyservices.com. And now back to our Crude Life podcast with today's guest, Kristen Burbank, owner of Mojo Fit Studios. Two different types of uh, yoga owners. One is a brick and mortar and the other one is an online. So I'm pretty excited about this. But let's start off with the brick and mortar. That's the traditional where you actually have a physical yoga space. Why don't you start off by explaining the difference between like the brick and mortar versus the uh, online part, since we kind of have the juxtaposition sitting right here. So, uh, Kristen, we'll start with you. Uh, difference between the uh, brick and mortar and the online from your perspective. The business, uh, the difference in the business is probably the biggest thing is you have to have a staff. I mean, if you're going to invest in brick and mortar, you you are making that commitment to not only the bills um, and the heat and all that kind of stuff, but you really are making commitment to managing a team. Um, and so that's much different. I, I have told our teacher trainers, and Ashley and I have talked about, if you are a yoga teacher that is really just passionate about teaching yoga all the time, brick and mortar is not the place for you to be. Um, if you're is interested more in the business side of it, then maybe you go into owning a studio space. But uh, I definitely spend more of my time managing people and bills and space um, than I do actually getting to enjoy teaching. <laughs> and let's just start off by yoga is your product. Okay, Correct. so yeah. talk to me about yoga just as the product itself, you know, as just the sure. industry, as just kind of the, the, the uh, peace of mind that it brings. Yep. Um, yoga has evolved into many different branches uh, for different people. We kind of focus a little bit more on the fitness. That doesn't mean that we don't have the meditation style and all of that, but we, we do have a primary focus of more of the power yoga. Um, and it has evolved a lot over the years. It's, it's transitioned into, in some cases, a, a fitness level. That's why we're called Mojo Fitness. Um, but we also get to bring some of the traditional yoga stuff in as well by practicing some inner calm and inner peace and, and just bridging that connection of our clients may come in for fitness, but they also get this added value of kind of calming their mind mm -hmm. and, and, um, and finding a little bit more peaceful place. Which we're finding out in uh, Western medicine is more and more important to our health, to our workplace health, to our family health. Uh, to our, like I said, first, our overall health in terms of cardiovascular, in terms of stress. Yep. Stress the number one killer on the planet. Right. So yes. uh, yoga is a way to de-stress. Hot yoga, words I can't pronounce yoga, <laughs> uh, Vinyasa. yoga swings. Yeah. Uh, it's really become quite an industry to where I'll compare it to, say, the karate industry. When I was growing up, there was karate. Right. And then Taekwondo came. Yep. And then and then now you've got Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with forty seven different versions. Yeah. Yoga seems like that to where it's becoming a little more specialized and yeah. it seems like the trainers and the educators are continuing their education. Is that why yep. we're becoming more specialized or is it because uh, we're discovering new rocks that work? I, I think it's twofold. <laughs> I think that um, the students look for a little deepening in their practice and one way for us to give them that is for us to find variations and get educated in different spaces of yoga um, so that we bring a little something different to them so they can continue to grow in their practice rather than just coming to the same type every every time. Ashley uh, will probably speak to this a little bit but she's trained in something called Budokan which is actually a bridging of that martial arts and yoga together um, and so it's just a little different spin. Um, it's also a way for the teachers to sort of get their own niche. So if you look at it from like a, not that yoga teachers are doctors by any means, we say that all the time, <laughs> but, um, but if you look at it from like a 
a doctor might find a special mm-hmm. niche to practice in. A yoga teacher might do the same thing where, where they're going to focus on, we have one teacher right now that's currently um, doing some extra education on chair yoga to help with um, people who may not be able to do the traditional poses and, the, and they need the chair or Budokan, which is the martial arts and um, yoga bridge, which is a really advanced level of yoga. I love it. Um, yeah, it's. I love the name. Yeah, I love everything <laughs> about it. It's a it's a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, I think that there it's both. It's it's the student need, but also the teacher's ability to evolve and and desire to evolve. I can't get over Budokan. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds like a festival. Come on out to Budokan. The way of the spiritual warrior. The <laughs> way of the Budokan. spiritual warrior. You, that might be bigger than Woodstock. <laughs> I mean, it's the next question I had for you is, industry over the last 10 years, it's grown pretty significantly. Uh, I don't know if it's because of movies. I don't know if it's because of the specialization. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of just the influence from the NFL and some of the male athletes. Because back in the 70s, uh, it, hippies were basically, that's it, right? right. I mean, and, yep. and you had to be a, defi- a very special kind of hippie to, yep. to do yoga. Uh, now, you know, you've got professional athletes that do it on a daily and promote it. You've got uh, singers and you've got uh, health professionals. What's caused this acceptance over the last 10 years, in your opinion? You, you know, yeah. I, th- I think that, well, we like to think that it's because the the act of doing yoga is is life-changing. I mean, um, someone who moves into an active yoga practice, we didn't fall, I mean, I fell into yoga from a corporate job um, because I was having a hard time managing my own life and was able to sort of find that balance. And um, today we move so quickly and we oftentimes don't even check in with ourselves. It's just like next, next thing, next thing, next thing. And by coming into a yoga class and not only, yes, maybe doing some of the physical movements, but also taking that time to, to do a self check-in can be very life changing for people. And then that word spreads a little bit like, oh my gosh, I changed my life because of yoga. And then Mm -hmm. all of a sudden their friend comes in. I think that's one part of it. Um, I'd say, from this business perspective, when we started getting referrals from from uh, physicians and doctors, um, I think that also uh, their acceptance of yoga as a practice has been really big on our particular business as well. Anecdotal medicine. I've heard claims from people who have fixed everything from hernias to... I don't know, shingles, we'll say, through yoga. I mean, and I don't know about shingles, but it was something, some kind of viral thing that they swear was sure. through yoga. Uh, anecdotally speaking, obviously you're not a doctor and, and, right. and you can't say that this is a New England Journal of Medicine. Sure. What, what, what have you experienced either through observation, clients, or in co- colleagues that have um, challenged Western medicine? Sure. I, yes, we say all the time, we are not doctors. We are not trained as doctors. We are not even Mm -hmm. close. Um, I've certainly seen people, uh, become healthier them themselves become healthier because of yoga. Um, you know, curing shingles is probably a bit of a stretch, but like you said, stress is, is, Mm -hmm. It is huge. It's bigger than I think people recognize. And I think people are under more stress than they recognize day to day. And when you start to decompress that stress and you, um, I think it's amazing what the body starts to heal itself Mm -hmm. and and recover from. So uh, I'd say that the stress reduction is probably bigger and whether or not shingles are being induced because of stress maybe there's terrible example by me (laughs) the the hernia one was real like i i did talk to someone who swore that meditation and yoga healed their hernia and i threw shingle i have no idea why i threw (laughs) shingles out there but like i said terrible example but at least you understood where i was coming from yeah no i I understand and i there's um you know then you start maybe for people who are a little more stationary and you start to move the body and you Mm -hmm. start to increase that blood flow and you oxygen uh start to send oxygen into the blood through the deep breaths and all of that i i certainly think that if I had a physician here, they would say that's going to be good for you, um, and you're going to start to see physical benefits from it. Is yoga just pretty much getting us Americans back to the basics? I, I think so. I do, too. Yeah. I mean, the way you were explaining that, yeah. I'm like going, 
oh, so we just pretend that we're a child again. Right. Remember how to breathe. <laughs> right. And then pretty much everything out in the atmosphere will take care of us, you know, for the most and part. And I, the breathing <laughs> part is the, uh, I had read in a uh, yoga article once that said, uh, as Americans, we were only breathing into like a very limited percentage capacity of our lungs just due to the mm-hmm. high anxiety and stress that we're under. And when you take the time to use that full capacity, um, that it, people were having. Incredible. I've done that. I've, yeah. I, I, do, I do the breathing exercises. I've done it. Um, just yesterday when I went, I went for about a five mile run mm-hmm. and I was consciously trying to do deep my, my breath, my yeah. breathing, because it's so easy to just breathe however is easiest while you're running and trying to breathe through my nose and trying to get it into the lung was so hard. I mean, I had actually stopped three times during my five mile run yesterday, which is the first time I've had to do that in, in a long time. Yeah. But I consciously, because of this interview, actually, because I'm going, okay, I got to start mentally preparing for this breathe. interview. <laughs> well, I knew it was coming up, so I was thinking about it, right? Because I know yeah. better. Yeah. But yeah, what were you going to say? Something? No, yeah. Oh. That's- so anyway, I just I wanted to put that. We, we do. We, it's almost like getting back to the basics. Mm-hmm. And in business, a lot of times, that's what they tell you a lot of times is just go back to that business plan. Mm-hmm. So go back to your health business plan right. and kind of combine the two, I guess. Okay, merchandise, because uh, you've got to get right in here in just a couple minutes. Yep. So uh, do, you, do you sell merchandise? Uh, I'm sure it's not a big portion of your, of your revenue, but yeah. uh, I imagine it takes care of some Christmas presents or something. Sure. Talk about your merchandise sales, and is, do you offer them online, or is it, do you only do it here? Just uh, yeah. um, We, well, depending... we. We don't offer them online right now because some of our merchant agreements do not allow us to sell online. Sure. Um, We really provide merchandise in the studio to cater towards what our clients would would like. I mean, out front, it's a small space. Our actual um, branded merchandise does pretty well. Um, With your name and logo? With our name and logo. Oh, great. So the sweatshirt today. Yeah. um, (laughs) We am kind of working on a new line to launch, but in the past, the the stuff that we've had has worked, has gone over really well, which is a surprise to me, honestly. So when you're talking about uh, uh, branded merchandise, your own branded merchandise, Mm -hmm. um, do you okay? So you use a you use a printer or, or a uh, correct a vendor. There yep. we go, vendor. Yep. And is it just pretty much the stuff that you would expect a yoga person to have, or do you get into keychains and other things too? Um, I don't like to spend, waste money, so I don't I don't uh, I don't like to spend a whole lot of stuff on taking chances like that. But we've we've dabbled into a few different things. Um, we have a when you walk in here we try to hit all the senses. So we have the, you'll notice that there's a smell of the studio. Um, we have some of our own custom oil blends that we use. Um, so we sell those blends and we sell the smell. Um, and then we sell, we have a Lululemon agreement. Uh, we're the only retailer. I'm sorry? A Lululemon agreement. Lululemon? Lululemon. If you got an exclusive <laughs> agreement or agreement with them, who is that? What yeah, is that? That's... They're um, probably one of the number one um they're high end yeah they're okay. a high end yoga brand we're the only retailer in north dakota um so we we do a lot of sales with them and we keep them pretty exclusive in the studio so i don't bring a whole lot of other um physical brands in other than them would you be considered a higher end uh would your client your customers be higher end by that i mean i suppose upper middle class and above and i'm you know anybody yeah. can do it don't don't get me sure. wrong but we're talking about um, you know, this is like a health membership, right. cl- you know, that yeah. type of thing. So this would be something that would be, uh, people would choose to do outside of their basics. Right. Uh, who, who's your customer base? Yeah. I mean, I guess naturally it kind of falls into that. We'd like to, we'd like to think. By, by we, the way, restaurants are too. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, we'd like to think that we could make yoga accessible for everyone. But as we were kind of talking about the brick and mortar and stuff before, um, I try to pay my teachers for what I feel that they're worth. And I feel like that's a little higher than they would probably make at any other place. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to have my sort of 
pick on really, really high-end teachers, and that costs money, and the brick and mortar costs money, and the, the spa-like space costs money. And so um, the per rate class is, is a higher than you'll find at maybe a yoga stu- or a yoga class in a gym. Oh, it, it would be? Okay. Yeah. So it would be a few bucks more? It would than... be a little okay. bit more expensive. So I think that naturally puts us into a little bit higher market. Um, you know, but that's where the saying "you get what you pay for" comes in, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, yep. Yep. you get what, and people people who listen to our programs understand quality. Yeah. They 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 like the idea of no offense, cost cutters. Right. They like the idea of going to a professional, yeah. uh, person who has customers and clients and and has a reputation on the line versus you don't know who you're getting. Chop shop, as we call it right. in business, chop shop. But it seems to me like you reach out to the public. If I was talking to Ashley a little bit before the interview, and she's doing things in the park and that sort of thing, so yeah. you're you're making your style and your brand accessible to the masses. Right. We we do try. I mean, we are as a group of yoga teachers pretty passionate about yoga in general and making it accessible um, to all that want to practice. Now mm-hmm. that that doesn't mean. I mean, if I. If I was a gazillionaire and I could offer free yoga classes to everyone, I, I would. Um, but we still have to pay the bills. On the other hand, we do have opportunities to provide some event classes and donation classes and things like that that are a little bit more accessible if someone wants to come in and practice. This is the calmest conversation about finances I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Actually, it was it uh, uh, Jason Blake, okay. uh, the, the former professional athlete uh, from Moorhead, Minnesota, played for the Kings. That was calm, too, just yeah. out of the blue. He just, and he was talking about commissions to his agent, and he yeah. didn't get upset at all. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, uh, uh, final question for you here, and then we'll let you get to your next appointment. We'll transition Ashley in. But um, talk about your business, um, what, how people can find you. Uh, uh, we're going to transition Ashley into the uh, – teaching seminar you got coming sure. up where if people want to become yoga instructors, yep. they can enroll in your college or your university, sure. yoga university. Uh, so talk about that. Talk about your business and uh, how people can uh, spend some money with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anytime. Um, yeah, you can look at all of, we just launched a new website a couple of months ago. So everything is um, accessible through there now. Our schedules are all kept up to date. We run a summer and a winter schedule. So the winter schedule uh, transitions over in September. Um, All the pricing is on there. Everybody gets their first 30 days for $30. So it's uh, a nice way for people to step in and just try it out, try all the different classes. We offer uh, heated yoga classes, hot yoga classes, non-heated classes. Um, We have a pretty decent prenatal yoga program um, along with bar uh, fitness, and then we're launching a boot camp next week as well. So uh, lots of different, uh, we try to make it so if our clients are coming here and they're holding memberships, they they get the full round of um, experience. Uh, mojofitstudios.com so www. mojofitstudios.com you, got it. Thank you, you mentioned yeah. memberships yep so people can buy a monthly membership here like a uh, like, like a gym yep and then do they have and then that they get certain amount of classes included with that or how does that work correct so for $99 a month you can do an auto pay membership so that's unlimited classes per month we run anywhere between six to eight or nine classes a day and so we try to we've really expanded on the offerings and number of classes Um, our auto pay members also get discounts on our event classes so on Sunday we're doing yoga uh, brunch on the rooftop of the Hodo downtown and Mm -hmm. um, our auto pay members all got 15% off that if they were um, well, I was I was going to say the membership really uh, when you mentioned ninety nine dollars a month for those people who know yoga and the pricing just by going a couple of days a week you're getting a yeah, bargain right there you really do I, it, it, the breakout is if you're if you're coming you know 11, eight times <laughs> well even 10 11 times okay. a month you're really getting a steal yeah if you come eight yeah you're getting it for cheaper than you it, it it really is in comparison to a lot of other markets like we talked about before uh, yoga is actually fairly new to this community mm-hmm. so um, if you were to go to other markets you would definitely be paying more than that we also do punch cards though so for some of our clients they jump around to different boutique places in yeah. town or they have other gym memberships so we have 10 and 20 packs that don't expire people can use them as they like if they're really just interested in the yoga our memberships kind of cater to someone who's looking for a little more full rounded fitness
fitness and they do bar classes and maybe our Tabata classes, but, um, but the, we also have those options of packages for those that just do yoga. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Nice to meet we'll you. We'll transition Ashley in now. And that was Kristen Burbank with Mojo Fit Studios. To listen to this podcast or other podcasts, visit thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter. We're also on social media. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'd like to take this time once again to thank you for supporting our Crude Life Media Network sponsors. Eric Hatch and Hatch Coaching. With Hatch Coaching, you'll experience extreme transparency. They're in the business of helping others. And in this case, that means helping you create wealth and abundance for your business. Check them out online at coachingwithhatch.com. Coachingwithhatch.com. MBI Energy Services. For more information about MBI Energy Services or to check out their latest job openings, visit their website, www.mbienergyservices.com. That's mbienergyservices.com. And that's it for this episode of the Crude Life Podcast. My name is Jason Spies. We'll see you next time. Because we're back to the way. Let me take a moment to talk to you about Eric Hatch and Hatch Coaching. Now with Hatch Coaching, you'll experience extreme transparency. Eric Hatch has built an empire on the business of helping others. And in this case, that means helping companies create wealth and abundance. By choosing Hatch Coaching, you're going to gain the knowledge and tools that will take your business to that next level. Eric Hatch speaks on workplace culture, honesty in the workplace, transparency, faith, compassionate capitalism, and many other topics that will grow your business. Make sure you call and reserve Eric Hatch today. 701-318-4946. That's 701-318-4946. Or I'll tell you what, send me an email, jason at the crudelife.com. That's jason at the crudelife.com. And I'll make sure that it gets to Eric Hatch. It's time for your company to create wealth and abundance too. Reserve Eric Hatch today.